Good evening and blessings and welcome to evening prayer here at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. And uh, it was, uh, I guess to begin with, it was wonderful to see so many of you who were able to gather with us uh, uh, last, uh, last Sunday uh, for our first time being inside, being inside in-person worship. And um, uh, again, it was just a blessing to see uh, so many of you uh, uh, in, in church um, to uh, to worship worship Christ, I guess you can say. Um, uh, this evening, our devotion is going to be sort of somewhat focused on uh, tomorrow because tomorrow is Ascension Day in the church. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in my devotion this evening. Uh, but let us begin by singing together Beautiful Savior. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We are illumined by the brightness of his rising. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Death has no more dominion over us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Joyous light of glory on the to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set light in the sky to govern the night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory through your Son, Jesus the Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Lifting up of my 
not inclined to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evil doers. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. A reading from St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This year, Ascension Day, is tomorrow, May 13th. It's a Thursday. Ascension always falls on Thursday because it falls 40 days after Easter Sunday. 40 days after Christ's resurrection, he ascended to the right hand of the Father. In this case, the timing of the liturgical year is simply following a historical fact. Ascension is one of, I guess you could say, Ascension is one of the, the, the forgotten days in the liturgical year. This is probably because it is a fixed day festival and, as mentioned, always falls on Thursday. In our lives, any church service apart from Sunday tends to be overlooked. After all, we have many other time commitments throughout the week. But let's be honest, even the Sunday morning worship service has become less and less of a priority to many Christians. So it is easy for Ascension Day to be overlooked. And that's too bad because it commemorates a very important part of Jesus' life and work in redeeming us from sin. Jesus himself teaches that part of the Son of Man's work is to be seated at the Father's right hand. All over the New Testament, there are references to Christ's ascension and his and at his being at the right hand of the Father. In Acts we read, But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven, and the sword of glory of God in Jesus, standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And that is in the book of Acts. In Romans we read, Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. And more than that, was raised from the dead and who is at the right hand of God, who is indeed interceding for us. In Colossians, we read, if then Christ has been, if we have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. In Colossians, we read, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above 
where again Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And in Hebrews we read, he is the radiance of God, the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe, and by uh, the word of his power. After making purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And again in Hebrews we read, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is, is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Do you see how even in this brief review of scripture, it teaches us the importance of Jesus having ascended into heaven? He has taken on our humanity into the presence of God. As a result of this part of his work of dying for our sins and being raised for our justification, we have hope. We have hope of dwelling in God's presence for eternity. So Ascension Day is an important partner with Christmas, Good Friday, Easter, and all of the other feasts of Christ in the liturgical year. In fact, it is an important partner with every Sunday, the Lord's Day, the day of resurrection. Let us pray. Almighty God, you, your blessed Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to trust that as he promised, he abides in us on earth to the end of time, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in, but in these, these last, last days, days, God has, God has spoken, spoken to, to us by, by the Son. Son. Amen. the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul, my soul proclaims, proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. 
You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Let us pray to the Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For the health of the creation, for abundant harvest that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance in a time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For all servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord, giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of all the saints. We commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord. O oh God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus the Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, whatever wilderness the Spirit has brought you to, walk in boldness as a beloved child of God. Walk in peace under the shelter of the Most High. And walk in faith knowing that Christ walks with you. Thanks be to God. Oh.